morning, children, and welcome to another Bible study and prayer Sunday in October. And uh, welcome to a new month. We thank God for it. And Sunday school starts today. Hooray! We're all happy to be back in Sunday school. Aren't we? Good. Okay, let's start the Bible study with a short prayer. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have come before you this morning to study at your feet. Father, Lord, we ask that you teach us. Father, Lord, that we ask that you fill our hearts, our minds, and everything about us with your word this morning. And let us understand you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, children, remember we have been studying the sub-theme, grace, salvation, and self-control. We're still at self-control. This time, we're going to use the example of Jesus Christ. And our text will be taken from Matthew chapter 26 and verse 54. Now, children, let us remind ourselves of what self-control is. Remember we said that self-control is the ninth fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we know the rest of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, don't we? Yes, I know you can recite it. But let's go on to self-control. We said self-control was the ability to manage our emotions, our thoughts, and our actions in the face of temptations and in the face of provocation. Today, we're going to look at self-control in another way. We are going to learn that self-control is being disciplined, not reacting even when you have the power to do so. Self-control is power under control. We can say it's easy for Jesus Christ to have self-control. After all, he's God. Yes, but we must remember that Jesus Christ also came as man. As it is written in John chapter 1 verse 14, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, in essence, Jesus Christ was born like you and I. He was a baby. Then, Jesus Christ grew up as a teenager, just like some of us grew up. He was obedient to his parents, Mary and Joseph, was an obedient child. Then he became a man. And when he was a man, we see he loved children. He carried children everywhere. And we can say that Jesus Christ, like any of us, behaved like any of us. He felt emotions. Jesus Christ cried when his friend Lazarus died. Jesus Christ also showed anger. He was very angry when he came to the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all manner of things in the church. And he was very angry and he beat them and drove them out of the church. And he said, my father's house is a house of prayer, not a den of robbers. So he showed anger just like you and I. And again, Jesus Christ was tempted and he was hungry like you and I. Satan tempted him. Satan said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you are the son of God, jump from this high place and fall on the ground. The angels will catch you after all. He said, the word of God says that the angels will not lie to you, harm yourself. But Jesus Christ, in all this, was able to tell Satan to get away from him that Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the word of God. And so, we, we are like Jesus Christ too. He was a man, we are human beings too. And so, let us read our text for today and see how Jesus Christ exercised self-control and how we can learn from his example. Now the passage for today is Matthew chapter 26 and verses 50 to 54. Are you there? Bring out, your, I'm sure your Bible is with you. Open your Bibles, children, to 
Matthew chapter 26. We are going to start the reading from verse 50. And I'm going to read. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so let us study this passage and see how we can use Jesus Christ as an example of a self-controlled person. Now, let us remember that Jesus Christ had his 12 apostles and one of them was Judas. And Judas was the one who betrayed Jesus Christ. Even though they were together, they ate together, they walked together, they did everything together, Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Yet Jesus Christ didn't throw him out or order that the other apostles would throw him out. No, he called him a friend. That is one example of how Jesus Christ controlled himself even in the face of betrayal. Secondly, a crowd came to arrest him. This crowd came without any warrant from the authorities. They only came by the order of the leadership. So they were, it was an illegal arrest. But Jesus Christ didn't say anything to them. He only told them that, how come so many of you are coming this way? Remember I'd been in the, uh, the temple teaching you and you didn't come as a crowd this aggressive. Yet Jesus Christ was not aggressive. So that is another lesson we learn from Jesus Christ's example of showing self-control. The third one was that this crowd came with swords and with sticks and with all manner of uh, instruments to, to beat him or to carry the, uh, the disciples that were with him and beat them up. Yet, Jesus Christ did not show any way of retaliation. Then the other was that Peter was so angry, he took his sword and cut off the ear of the uh, uh, well, the servant of the high priest. And Jesus Christ said, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be violent for my sake. Don't do that. And Peter, he, he, took, he, he took control of that period and said, we must not react violently. That's another example of Jesus Christ showing himself as a self-controlled person. The next one was that when they said they were going to ar arrest him, he just followed them obediently. But you know that Jesus Christ said in the passage we read that he could call, call his father and he will send down legions, 12 legions of angels to fight for him. Do you know how many angels are in one legion? 6,000 angels. And do you know that one angel alone can kill up to 185,000 people at once? So Jesus had all this authority in his hands, yet he said he was not going to use it. Let us read the 54th verse of the passage we read. Then we will understand why Jesus Christ did not do, take any action at all. Jesus Christ said in uh, Matthew 26, 54, but how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? What this means is that Jesus Christ came to fulfill a purpose. And the purpose of his coming 
is to give us eternal life, you and I. Remember John chapter 3 verse 16 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So that was Jesus Christ's purpose for coming. And he was focused on it and he wasn't going to allow anything to derail his focus. Do you have a focus? Do we have a focus? Yes, your focus at this moment is to go to school and do well in school and make your parents proud. That is your focus. But our focus in the end is to have eternal, eternal life. Jesus came to give us eternal life and it is for us to take that eternal life. Praise the Lord. Now, children, let us ask ourselves some questions. Yes, we have read the passage of how Jesus showed self-control and how he was an example. But is it possible for us to imitate Jesus? I think it is. Let us read John chapter 1 verse 12. He says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. It is therefore possible that like father, it will be like children. Meaning that because he is our father, we will be like him. And so for us to be like Jesus, the first thing to do is to accept him as our Lord and Savior. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he imputes his spirit in us, meaning the Holy Spirit is in us. We receive the Holy Spirit. And because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have his mind. Let us check 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 b. It says, but we have the mind of Christ. Because we have the mind of Christ, we are able to do many things. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in our lives, we will live the, holy, the kind of holy life and the kind of life Jesus lived. Remember, in Philippians 1.13, I'm sure we all know it. I can do all things, all things, all things. I can do all things through God. This strengthens me. Remember, yes, we have the spirit of Christ in us so we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we can be like Jesus. We can imitate Jesus. Now let us ask ourselves again, how do we go about achieving this level of self-control? How? Now, if we read Matthew 5 verses 1 to 11, it's a long passage and I will leave you to read it later. But the essence of that passage is that Jesus Christ was teaching us about the Beatitudes. That is the character we need to have to be more like Christ like the children of God that we are. And we can achieve this by showing love. Jesus Christ showed us so much love. Remember, he came to die for us. By showing so much compassion, by being meek, that is humble. Jesus Christ was so humble, so humble. See, can you imagine what he could do? He could rain curses on them. He could send a, a legion of angels on them. Yet, he was so humble, he just looked at them and there was no need. Are you humble? Are you humble? Humility is very important. Then, the next thing is that we must want to do what is right all the time. We must be forgiving. Remember, be merciful. If Jesus Christ didn't forgive us our sins, will we be where we are? Will we have eternal life? No. Therefore, we must be merciful like Jesus Christ says we should be. And then we must be pure in heart. How can you live a life only thinking of wicked things and bad things? Those of us who read bad 
terrible uh, books or watch uh, movies that are not encouraging and build or building you up it is wrong jesus says you must do have a pure heart do that which is right then jesus christ in that uh, um, teaching says we must be peacemakers why should you always want to fight? Be the one causing quarrel. Be the one uh, 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 beating up others. Or be the one leading the gang. No, he says, we must be peacemakers. And then we must be patient, even under provocation and persecution. Remember, Jesus was very patient. He was just looking at them. He told Peter, calm down, calm down, don't fight. And so that is the way he wants us to learn to be like him. We must be disciplined all the time. We must be consistent in, doing, in being disciplined and self-control and doing that which is right. We must, not when mommy is there or when your teacher is there, we, we, we pretend. When we are away and our, we are on our own, we start doing what we, are, uh, what we like. That is, you must be consistent. And we must be diligent in learning all these virtues that have uh, uh, enumerated to us, that have uh, told us about. When we understand God and we know his will for us, just like Jesus did, Jesus had the focus, then our self-control will be in a, on a high gear, meaning that we are really showing self-control. Now, let us go to the third question. The third question says, how do we cope with temptation? That's a serious question. How can we cope with temptation? Jesus Christ was tempted too, remember? Jesus Christ was tempted, but how did he cope with it? In um, James chapter one, verse 13 to 15, when we have time, you read it up. He says that God does not tempt anyone. We are tempted when we allow our desires to take over. Jesus Christ didn't allow his desire to take over. You shouldn't allow your desire to take over. You shouldn't want to do everything. You should learn to control your emotions, like we said. Learn to control your thoughts and learn to control your actions. And we must remember that Temptation happens to everybody, just like I said earlier. It also, it also even happened to Jesus, but he was able to overcome it. Now, let us go to the fourth question, which says, what factors, including your personality, hinders us from achieving self-control? That is very easy, I'm sure. I'm sure the first thing you will talk about is discipline. When you lack discipline, it's very difficult to show self-control. Therefore, we must learn to discipline our body and put it under control, as it said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. We must control our anger. We must control our eating. We must not want to eat everything all the time, eating, eating. We must control how we talk. We don't have to respond to everything. As he said in Proverbs 29, 11. We must know, have a sound knowledge of the word. You remember Jesus Christ, when he was tempted, he used the word for Satan all the time. Satan said, oh, fall down from that high place. The angels will catch you. you say, ah. You, the word of God says you don't, you don't test the Lord your God. So he had the word of God all the time. You too, to be like Jesus, you ha also have to have a sound word of God in you. And you must live a reverent, careful life. Meaning you must not depart from your faith and godliness. You must do that which is right all the time. You must not be careless about everything you do. Remember, it, for you to have self-control like Jesus, you have to be careful how you behave. 
and you must be submissive and teachable. When your teacher is trying to correct you, do you listen? Do you accept? Then again, for you, this good trait in you is also respect. You must show respect. You must honor your father and your mother, that is your parents. And you must ensure that you don't have an, uh, an idle mind. Your mind is always focused. The last question, which says, self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is a work in progress. How can today's church assist the individual in achieving these goals? Initially, I said today the church, the big church, no. Remember, church is, the church is the body of Christ. The church is you and I. The church is your, you and your family, your father, your mother, and your siblings. And so we make up the church. And so we must preach the truth. We must tell ourselves the truth. We must be open to correction. We must study the Bible together. We must speak against any wrong thing that we are doing. We must not be behaving in a bad way and we are condoning it. And then we must be consistent. Remember what I said? What you are able to do in the open, um, in, the, in, the, in hiding or in the an enclosed place, you must do it in the open. And then we must be there to advise one another. And then we must be the role model. We must be the Bible that the world can read. So children, in conclusion, Jesus Christ has given us the standard. He has shown us how to have self-control. And so, in concluding this talk, let us pick those points that we brought out. To be like Jesus, we must seek to know him. We must let him be our Lord and Savior. God has given us the Bible to teach us how. We must always use the scripture as a weapon. We must be obedient to all his teachings and even obedient to our parents. We must not be hearers alone, but we must also be doers of the word of God. We must always pray and ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance. We must allow the Holy Spirit to walk in us because just saying it, will not work, but you must allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Jesus exhibited meekness, humility. Are we ready to show humility? Remember, we can do the same because we have the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Children, have we learned something today? When we go back, and look at our notes, we will see that we have learned quite a lot. And so let's quickly go to our memory verse. Are we ready? Memory verse. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Let's go over it again. It's very easy, simple. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So it is very important that we show meekness, humility, just like Jesus showed. Let us pray, children. Lord Jesus, we thank you for teaching us and for giving us yourself as an example of how to show self-control. Even when you had all the authority and power to overturn everything that was against you. But because you came to save all of us and to give us eternal life, Lord Jesus, we are grateful. We are asking, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will always guide us. We want to know you more and more. When we read your word, Lord, help us to understand you more and more so that in the end, we will be with you in heaven and we will have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So children, till next time, Bible study 
and uh, prayer Sunday, which will be in November. Have a good month and be sure to keep safe. Love you. Mwah.